The story begins to unfold when Jason, working in his office, receives an unexpected gift, a mysterious black box. This isn't just any gift, it's a hidden invitation to the dangerous escape room game. In another place, Zoe's roommate stumbles upon a package for Zoe, and inside it, the same black box. Early at work, Ben also spots one of these black boxes meant for him. He tries to forcefully open it, but it surprisingly pops open on its own. At the same time, Zoe quickly figures out how to open her box. Jason, not to be left out, searches for videos online to guide him in unlocking his box. Once they succeed, they find a note inside each of their boxes. It offers a challenge, escape the minus escape room and win a whopping $10,000. The following day, Ben is found poised outside the imposing minus building puffing away on a cigarette. As he contemplates the situation, a car smoothly comes to a stop behind him. It's not long before Amanda makes her entrance, her gaze fixed on the tall structure. As she steps into the elevator, Danny dashes in at the last moment, subtly revealing a mobile phone he's managed to smuggle in. The elevator doors slide open, revealing a seemingly normal waiting room where Mike, Jason, and Zoe have already settled in. Amanda, being proactive, approaches the reception desk only to be dissuaded by the others who sense something amiss. Following Amanda, Danny makes his entrance, and finally, Ben steps in. An aura of unease settles when Ben attempts to open the door for a smoke, only for the doorknob to unexpectedly snap off. Mike approaches with the intention of resolving the issue, but Danny, with a flicker of realization, suspects that their game has already begun. His suspicions are confirmed upon spotting an oven dial on the door. Believing it to be a combination lock, he urges the group to search the room for clues. Amidst their search, Zoe's sharp eyes catch a hint linked to coasters on a table. Acting on impulse, she presses one, causing a partial opening in an air duct. Realizing the coasters need to be pressed simultaneously, the team collaborates. Jason, being the first to venture into the duct, soon requires a tool held by Mike, prompting a swift switch with Amanda. However, as Amanda maneuvers through the claustrophobic space, memories of her traumatic time in Afghanistan resurface, leading to a panicked scream. The group concerned urges Zoe, who seems to have formed a connection with Amanda, to help her. Back in the waiting area, Danny and Ben, in an inspired move, use water to weigh down the coasters, but they fall short, leading to a tense moment. As the room's temperature starts to rise menacingly, a solution presents itself in the form of Ben's liquor bottle. Just in the nick of time, they pour the contents into the half-empty glass, triggering the exit. As flames begin to engulf the room, the group makes a desperate leap through a fireplace, escaping one ordeal, only to be potentially faced with another. As tension mounts, Zoe and Jason search the room for clues. To their relief, Jason uncovers the first key, which fits one of the door's locks. Upon discovering a second lock that demands a word for its code, Ben is overwhelmed by a haunting flashback. A carefree moment with friends, singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer right before a devastating collision. Grasping at the shards of this memory, Ben suggests Rudolph as the code. The door swings open, only to expose them to an icy wilderness with a frozen stream beneath. The security of the cabin is betrayed as the doors and windows seal shut, trapping them in the biting cold. While surveying their chilling environment, Jason spots a locked door. The group's search yields a weird mix of items, a compass, magnet, and fishing rod, along with an ice fishing hole. Their efforts lead them to fish out a key entrapped in an ice cube. In a tragic turn, as Danny tries to get Ben's lighter to melt the ice, he plunges through the fragile surface, drowning in the icy depths below. Grieving Danny's loss and racing against the threat of hypothermia, Jason rallies the group to huddle together, using their combined body warmth to melt the ice cube. Once they secure the key, Jason's attempt to unlock the door fails. In a last-ditch effort, they make a break across the stream, narrowly escaping as the treacherous ice gives way beneath them. Their next challenge? An eerily inverted bar room, complete with pool tables. As they set foot inside, they quickly identify a door without a doorknob, and Mike hypothesizes that the missing eight ball from the pool table might be the missing piece. Suddenly, a phone cord descends from above. The voice on the other end cryptically advises them to watch their step. Soon after, sections of the floor start to disintegrate. Amanda, with a lot of determination, decides to climb up the wall located behind the bar. 
When she gets to the top, she finds a safe. This safe needs a special four-digit code to open it. The whole group works together to find the code. They especially count on Zoe because she's really smart. Using her quick thinking, Zoe helps them solve a tricky sliding tile puzzle which they believe has the code. But even after all that effort, they're disappointed because the safe still won't open. As the precarious situation unfolds, Zoe's own traumatic past emerges, a harrowing plane crash where she was the sole survivor, left hanging upside down amongst the lifeless. As the floor continues its treacherous descent, Mike, Ben, Jason, and Zoe cluster near the room's exit. Connecting her experience with their current situation, Zoe suggests Amanda invert and reverse the code to match their inverted surroundings. Her theory proves right, and Amanda retrieves the eight ball. But as she contemplates her path to the group, she realizes the grim truth. She won't make it. In a brave act of sacrifice, Amanda tosses the eight ball to Jason, ensuring the group's progression just moments before her tragic fall. The group soon finds themselves navigating the unsettling confines of a hospital ward. Each bed mirrors the exact places where they had once been treated following their respective traumatic events. Memories flood back, Zoe's harrowing plane crash, Mike's miraculous survival after a mining disaster, Ben's guilt-ridden night when his drunk driving led to the loss of his friends, and Jason's chilling memory of being the lone survivor after his boat overturned in freezing waters. They also learn about Danny's heart-wrenching loss when his entire family died to carbon monoxide poisoning and Amanda's haunting survival from a deadly blast in Iraq. As they piece together the unsettling reality, it becomes clear that each of them was meticulously chosen to partake in this twisted game, a deadly contest to determine the luckiest of the already lucky. Disturbingly, elements of the escape rooms seem to be tailored based on their past traumas. Suddenly, a television screen flickers to life, delivering a creepy message. They have just five minutes to spare. Should they fail, they will be engulfed by a lethal poison gas. Their only hint, put your heart into it. Panic ensues. Jason, Ben, and Mike quickly connect a heart rate monitor, deducing that reaching a specific heart rate might be their salvation. Tragically, in a misguided attempt to boost his heart rate, Jason uses an electric shock on Mike multiple times, ending his life. As the deadly gas seeps into the room, Jason, desperate and fearful, connects himself to the monitor, allowing the gas to depress his heart rate. Miraculously, this act unveils an escape route. Jason and Ben rush to safety, but Zoe stays behind, seemingly dying after sabotaging the room's final surveillance camera. The next chamber is disorienting, with walls and furniture covered in dizzying optical illusions. A heated confrontation arises between Ben and Jason. Ben's disgust over Jason's selfish actions towards Mike and indifference for Zoe is palpable. Under pressure, Jason confesses a dark truth. He had sacrificed his roommate at sea, using a now infamous red parka for his own survival. Their tension escalates when they discover an antidote, meant for just one person, to counteract a hallucinogenic agent released in the room. As hallucinations blur their reality, the two engage in a brutal struggle. In a desperate move, despite a broken leg, Ben manages to fatally injure Jason, using the room's deceptive environment to his advantage. Ben, battered and weary, proceeds to the final challenge. Ingeniously, he redirects flames from a fireplace, creating a makeshift tunnel to evade an impending death trap. His reward? A chilling introduction to the Game Master, the twisted architect behind these escape rooms. The Game Master unveils the grim reality. These escape rooms are designed with a sinister motive, and the participants, handpicked, are mere pawns in a larger game where elite individuals place bets on the outcome. While Ben naively believes his struggle has concluded, the Game Master has other plans. Determined to prevent the dark secrets of the game from being exposed, the Game Master makes a final attempt on Ben's life. In an unexpected twist, Zoe, proving her resilience, manages to survive by ingeniously utilizing an oxygen mask. When two cleaners enter her room to dispose of evidence, she uses the element of surprise to overpower and incapacitate them, then quickly makes her exit. Elsewhere, Ben uses a splintered piece of wood, previously embedded in his leg, to defend himself. As the monitors flicker, revealing Zoe's alive status, she bursts onto the scene. In the ensuing battle, she's nearly overpowered, but timely intervention by Ben tilts the balance. 
Together, they put an end to the Game Master's menace and escape the haunting building. The day after the harrowing incidents, Ben finds himself in the hospital. Thankfully, he's doing okay and isn't in any danger. Zoe is there too, keeping him company and sitting right next to his bed. While they're together, a detective enters the room. He looks at Zoe and asks if she can come with him for a bit. She agrees, and he leads her to the Minus building. But when they get there and go inside, it's not what Zoe was expecting. All the escape rooms that were once there are now gone. Zoe tries to explain to the detective about the crazy escape rooms and what happened, but he seems skeptical. He tells her that without any solid evidence to back up her story, it's hard for the police to believe her. Six months down the line, Ben and Zoe reconnect over coffee. Zoe presents a meticulously compiled folder detailing how each of their group's deaths were masterfully disguised as accidents. Despite Ben's reservations and pleas to move forward, Zoe is resolute. She's decoded the cryptic logo, which pointed to a building in Manhattan, and has already secured plane tickets for both of them. Although reluctant, Ben's loyalty to Zoe prevails, and he agrees to accompany her. But as their plane takes off, one engine ignites into flames, leading to an apparent crash. In a mind-bending revelation, two figures emerge, making it clear that the crash was yet another simulated scenario. Little do Zoe and Ben know, the game's malevolent architect is already orchestrating their next challenge. Planning to trap them in a deadly airborne game, with the odds stacked impossibly against them. The screen fades to black, concluding the movie and leaving us with a wild suspense as we realize the story isn't truly over. 